All right, hello everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna solve problem 8.20 of the book. And in this problem, they ask us to find I of T for T greater than zero. And they mentioned that the circuit, that actually the, the switch in the circuit has been closed for a long time and it opened at time T equal to zero. So as you know, what we should do is that, first of all, we have a second order circuit. So we know that we need to find if the circuit is under damped, over damped, or critically damped. But before that, <clears throat> we need to go ahead and find the initial conditions of the circuit. And how does that work? We know that the current through the inductor does not change instantaneously, and the voltage across the capacitor does not change instantaneously. So it means that um, whatever voltage that we had for the capacitor before time t equal to zero, it will be exactly equal to that at the instant that t is equal to zero, which means that the, the switch is open. And the same thing is for the current through the inductor. So let's draw the circuit for time t less than zero first. So when it says that the circuit has been in this condition for a long time before time t equal to zero, it means that the circuit has reached the steady state. And we know that in steady state, inductor acts as a short circuit and the capacitor acts as an open circuit. So the second circuit is the equivalent circuit for uh, when time was less than zero. So let's go here and find the current through the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor. So the voltage across the capacitor clearly for time before zero <coughs> was equal to negative 30 volts. And we know that this is equal to the voltage of the capacitor at time equal to zero, the instant after time t equal to zero, which is the initial condition of the capacitor. And for the current through the inductor, if I write the KVL in the loop that I have, I can see that I can write 2i minus 30 is equal to zero. So i of zero is equal to 15 amps. So we found i of zero and v of zero. Now we will go on and move on to the time t greater than zero. So as they mentioned in the circuit, at time t equal to zero, the switch is open, so the middle branch will be gone. So it will be out of the circuit. And the circuit that we will left with is the inductor, the resistor, and the capacitor. So this is what we're gonna left with here. So as I mentioned before, we need to find out if the circuit is overdamped underdamped or critically damped. So for that matter, we need to find alpha and omega zero. So we know that alpha is equal to R over two multiplied by L, which is two over two multiplied by 0 0.5, and that would give us two. And then omega zero is equal to one over square root of L multiplied by C. And that is 1 over square root of, so L is half, and C is 1 over 4. So it will be square root of um, 0 0.5 multiplied by 1 over 4, and that will give us 2 square root of 2. So clearly, alpha is less than omega 0. So alpha is less than omega 0. So from here we can conclude that the circuit is underdamped. So it means that we have an underdamped response, right? So let's write that we have an underdamped response. So we know that whenever we had an underdamped response, the equation for I of t is equal to A1 cosine of omega dt plus A2 sine of omega dt multiplied by e to the negative alpha t. So what do I have to find here? I need to find... Um, 
omega d <clears throat> and we know that omega d is equal to the square root of omega 0 squared minus alpha squared and that is equal to 2 so I will substitute for alpha and omega d so I'm going to have a1 cosine of 2t plus a2 sine of 2t e to the negative 2t so now here we have to find the coefficients a1 and a2 so first thing that we can do is that we do have i of 0 so if I put t equal to 0 in this equation I can find i of 0 so i of 0 is equal to 15 right and that is equal to a1 cosine of 0 is 1 and a2 sine of 0 is 0 so it's a1 e to the negative 2 multiplied by 0 so that would be equal to a1 so from here a1 is equal to 50 so we saw that our initial condition of i is only helping us to find coefficient a1 and it's not helping us to find a2 so what can we do for a2 we can go back here and we can look at this circuit we can consider the circuit at time t equal to 0 positive which, mean, which means the instant that the switch has been opened so at this instant the circuit is still in transient right between the previous condition and the new condition so we still have the inductor and capacitor available in our circuit right and since in the question they mentioned that i of t is in this direction then we know that this is negative positive VL we had positive negative VC and R so now if I write a KVL in this circuit I'm gonna have what I'm gonna have negative VL plus VR plus VC equal to zero so how can this help me so I can write VL as L DI over DT so if I have DI of zero and then VR is R I of zero plus VC of zero is equal to zero. So from this equation, I can find DI of zero over DT. And if I take the derivative of this I of T, then I can find coefficient A2 as well. So that's why at the beginning of this chapter, I started showing you how to find the initial conditions. So the initial conditions that can help us here in solving these kind of questions is the current through the inductor, so the initial condition of that current, the voltage across the capacitor, the um, initial condition of that voltage, and also dI of 0 over dt, or sometimes dV of 0 over dt, that is the voltage across the capacitor, so based on what equation we are looking for. So here, I can write dI of 0 over dt is equal to so we have negative 1 over half multiplied by we have r i of 0 r is 2 and i of 0 was 15 so we have 30 then um this is positive 30 and then we're going to have v of c that is going to the other side as well so that will be v c of 0 let's go up here and VC of 0 was negative 30, right? So this is negative 30, and then we can get a 0 here. So now, if I take the derivative of my main equation that is over here, and set t equal to 0, I can find my coefficient a2. So let's take the derivative of that equation. So di over dt is equal to... First, I'm going to take the derivative of the first term so it's negative 2 a1 sine of 2t plus 2 a2 cosine of 2t multiplied by e to the negative 2t and then minus 2 e to the negative 2t a1 cosine of 2t plus a2 sine of 2t 
so if i set t equal to zero this term will be zero and this term will be zero this term will be a one this term will be two this term is one and this whole term will be two a two so down here i can say that di of zero over dt is equal to 2a2 minus 2a1 is equal to 0. So from here, we can get a2 equal to 8. So we found both coefficients, a1 and a2, and we have everything else. So we can go ahead and write the equation for i of t. That is a1 cosine of 2t plus a2 sine of 2t e to the negative 2t amps. All right, so I hope you understood this problem. If you have any questions, we can leave them in the comments down below. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.